Okay, chapter 46 of North and South um, continues on uh, this kind of circular structure. So uh, as we saw Margaret in London, now that she's changed, she's a different Margaret, uh, she also goes on a trip to Helston with Mr Bell. And again, we see the differences in Margaret. Um, and also, of course, the differences in Helston itself. So really the theme of this chapter is change. That change is inevitable. You can't stop change. That, that, that time brings change. Um, and so, in a sense, um, I don't know, that, that we all have to change. And, and like um, Margaret has to change and mature and grow older and become a woman such as in the building's Roman of the novel, um, so do places. Places have to change. Um, so in a way, of course, as we've been discussing, it's not just Margaret's building's Roman, but a building's Roman of England as well. England is, is changing, is going into the future, and that there's no point pining after the past. The past has gone. Um, and that a certain amount of change and upheaval is, is just natural and, and we cannot prevent it. Um, so, for example, here, uh, the land, the hotel landlady, uh, the inn, innkeeper's lady, uh, says, times is changed, miss. Okay, and that's kind of the theme of the chapter, times is changed, miss. Uh, talking to Margaret, uh, they go out and have a walk and they see lots of change. Here and there, old trees had been felled the autumn before, or a squatter's roughly built and decaying cottage had disappeared. Margaret missed them each and all and grieved over them like old friends. And yet there's a sense that progress is good. Uh, why would we want this roughly built and decaying cottage? Hopefully something better has been um, built there. They came past the spot where she and Mr Lennox had sketched the white lightning-scarred trunk of the venerable beech, which is a tree, among whose roots they had sat down was there no more. The old man, the inhabitant of the ruinous cottage, was dead. The cottage had been pulled down, and a new one, tidy and respectable, had been built in its stead. Okay, so there's change and it, it seems progress. You cannot stop progress. I did not think I had been so old, said Margaret, after a pause of silence, and she turned away sighing. Yes, said Mr Bell, it is the first changes among familiar things that make such a mystery of time to the young. The instability of all human things is familiar to me. To you it is new and oppressive. And, okay, this one is a little bit different. This is um, Margaret speaks to one of the cottagers who is angry that her cat has been taken. Her neighbour took the cat and apparently roasted it um, because a superstition is that if you burn a cat alive, uh, you will get a wish. Um, and the cottager whose cat has been taken is very upset that her cat has been taken, but um, she believes that it's true. She believes that if you burn the cat, then your wish will be granted. So a very illogical, unscientific superstition. Margaret listened in horror and endeavoured in vain to enlighten the woman's mind, but she was obliged to give it up in despair. Margaret gave it up in despair and walked away sick at heart. So here we see something about Helston, um, that it is not perhaps the earthly paradise stuck in time that Margaret remembers it as, that there's a fair bit of darkness in this kind of rural backwater, this kind of superstitious ignorance that occurs there. Um, but at least her daughter, little Susan, is now going along to school. Um, yes, so yeah, we see that Margaret gets a different perspective on her beloved Helston. 
over here again, change is emphasised. The parsonage was so altered, both inside and out, that the real pain was less than she had anticipated. It was not like the same place. Okay, so even her home was completely changed. And somehow this visit to Helston had not been all, had not been exactly what she had expected. There was change everywhere, slight yet pervading all. Households were changed by absence or death or marriage, or the natural mutations brought by days and months and years which carry us on imperceptibly from childhood to youth and thence through manhood to age, whence we drop like fruit, little simile there, fully ripe into the quiet mother earth. Obviously that's death. Uh, and there again we have this sense that change is inevitable, that time brings change. And also, of course, in Margaret herself, that Margaret herself has changed. Her attitudes have changed. It's a building's Roman. She's grown to maturity. And again, that emphasis, a sense of change, of individual nothingness, of perplexity and disappointment overpowered Margaret. Nothing had been the same. And this slight all-pervading instability had given her greater pain than if all had been too entirely changed for her to recognise it. Okay, so she feels the pain of this change. Uh, and I too change perpetually. Now this, now that. So she recognises that in herself as well. That, that change is in everything. Change is inevitable. And by the end of the chapter she thinks, I don't think I'd like to go on another visit. Okay, she should shrink back from such another visit. So her um, rosy vision of Helston, she now returns as a different, more mature person and recognises that she can't go back to Helston. It's a different place. And she also recognises some of the darker aspects of Helston itself.